40 years after their first two albums were favorites on Freeform FM Rock Radio, and their memorable hit single Back When My Hair Was Short became a hit on Top 40 AM radio around the country, Gun Hill Road is back. Back when my hair was short. In November of 2013, the trio, Glenn Leopold, Steve Goldrich, and Paul Reich, returned to the studio to work on the very, very, very long-awaited third recording, a stunningly poignant 19-track CD now being released in 2014. I don't know of any band that speaks to each other after 40 years, so I think it's exciting. This is, without question, one of the highlights of my life. I never thought I would ever do this again. It's It's never been done before. To come back and do totally new stuff like this. But people don't go 40 years between albums. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't make sense. It's just the power of, I don't know if will, but just the idea of having dreams and stuff of things you'd like to do. Gun Hill Road was formed in Mount Vernon, New York in the late 1960s by Glenn Leopold and Steve Goldrich. They were soon joined by Gil Roman and first performed at New York's premier club, Paul Colby's The Bitter End. So Paul was a character, you know, he's a short guy, you know, whatever, and... Um, Paul said, I want you to open for the Ace Trucking Company at the Bitter End. It was a three-week uh, thing. You have to earn your keep. You find out what it means to be, you have to be in entertainment every second while you're there, and just be yourself. Soon after, they began to open for many of the top acts of the time, and were considered one of the best opening acts in the business. They were great opening acts. We had three people who played two acoustic instruments, and we played very tight sets. We rarely, if ever, did not win over these audiences. He complimented the stars. We joked a lot. Had sort of a funny, well, I don't know how funny it was, but it was a banter, you know, between Steve and I. I like I said, I used to sit in the back and laugh for most of the time. And I'd be sitting, I want to get out a joke, and I can't because they're just ahead of me all the time, whatever the heck it is. And, I said, and I'm so busy laughing, I don't care anymore. Gun Hill Road recorded two albums in the early 1970s. Their debut LP, First Stop, was released on Mercury Records in 1971. Despite minimal promotion by the record label, the album became a favorite of FM DJs, most notably the first single, 42nd Street. Where every marquee light discloses one more man's defeat. A song like 42nd Street, which had the, the wonderment of a young person looking at the decadence of the world as it existed on 42nd Street, was very much the way I looked at New York City, and I played that song every single day. They had really good songs. I thought, wow, this, these, guys, these guys are really good. I, I, like, I like their stuff. We were so happy to be doing this that we probably would have said, yeah, if you want, you can cut my fingers up. I'll play piano with this side. Within just a few months of First Stop's release, Gun Hill Road left Mercury and joined Kama Sutra Records, where they had the opportunity to work with legendary record industry visionary Neil Bogart and country pop music great Kenny Rogers. What I loved about them was their music, and I loved the fact that they were passionate about it, they wanted to do it, and they wanted to do it right, and they were willing to let me experiment with some things. You hire good people and let them do what they do and I think they understood that concept. During the summer of 1973, Back When My Hair Was Short cracked the top 40 of all three major trade publications, Billboard, Record World, and Cashbox. Later that summer, Paul Reich took over on bass guitar and background vocals from Gil Roman. The new trio continued to tour into the mid-70s. We had a mutual friend that was a, that was a sound guy at the Bitter End, and he said, you know, they're at Gunny Road, they're looking to replace their bass player. So I went down and auditioned, and, uh, and we spent a lot of time goofing around, having fun. It was having fun. We were doing, you know, Bitter End-type places in uh, Boston. There was one in Washington. By the mid-1970s, it was time to move on, and the members of Gun Hill Road went their own ways, their friendships intact. Leopold headed west to California and has enjoyed a successful career writing scripts and music for television. Goldrich stayed in New York and took over his father's business, which he grew to its current success. Reich, after spending time in Colorado, returned to New York as well, where he started his own business, but also continued to play music professionally. 
Gun Hill Road was, for several decades, just a great memory for its members, for its friends, and for its fans that loved and still love their music. Back When My Hair Was Short continues to get airplay on the classic hit stations, and in fact, it's in the rotation on Sirius XM's 70s on 7 channel. Nearly 40 years later, fate suddenly intervened. Wounded Bird Records released a newly mastered version of the second CD, Gun Hill Road. And I remember Glenn saying to me, he said, boy, talk about serendipity, this is such an odd thing. You punch yourself into Google, and you see Gun Hill Road, and all of a sudden it seemed like there were people that were still looking, so it kind of put the seed in your head, there's still people that remember this you know, kind of stuff. Just two weeks after the re-release of this CD, the trio of Leopold, Goldrich, and Reich took the stage together for the first time in 36 years as part of the star-studded lineup of a benefit concert for Paul Colby. I called Steve first. I said, would you want to play this? And he said, sure. I, I, you know, I haven't been playing that much, but I'd be willing to do that stuff. And, and then uh, he got a hold of Paul. And Why not? We had a lot of fun together, so I figured, let's do it. Paul and, Paul and Steve had been practicing without me. I was sending them lyrics and stuff. I said, oh God, I'm thinking this is gonna be like a nightmare. So we started playing 40 Seconds Street or whatever, and like from the first thing, it was like swimming. You know, all of a sudden it was like, the voices all blend and all the stars were aligned for a, you know, for a kind of, for a homecoming. I mean, it gave me the chills. The combination of the enthusiastic crowd reception and the enjoyment the band members got out of playing together again led to discussions over the next two years about heading back into the studio to record a long overdue third full length CD. Sometimes I think I'm alone. I think I'm the only one. I remember when we first walked in, the first day we started to record, it was that, well, this is now real. For as long as I've been playing music, I never did any recording, you know, it, it's a whole different ball game, you know. Every day we find new, untapped, kind of like fracking, you know, kind of like uh, musical fracking. Now I get to sit in that chair and say, why don't we change this part, and I'll add this, and I'll keep doing this until we get it right. For the first time in Gunner Road, we're doing some of my stuff. The five songs of mine on this were all written by me in the 70s. I got in the impression in the first time that they walked in as a group together, that the chemistry was there. Although that maybe they didn't play music together with each other for many, many years. It was like jumping back on a bike and start riding it again. The same reaction was, wow, this is why we love doing this so much. And that's really what it came down to. After months of dedication, the result is a magnificent new album appropriately titled Every 40 Years, now available on CD. I, I think the new album is a masterpiece. 19 tracks, 19 songs is a lot of songs, but 40 years is a lot of years. Am I the publisher? <laughs> The fascinating journey that is Gun Hill Road is one that obviously has many more miles of creativity left to go. Every 